Cristo.
Today we um, are celebrating Epiphany, which is the season of manifestation of the light coming uh, in the birth of Christ and the incarnation. Um, so this is the time where we hold on to Christmas just a little bit longer and we celebrate the Magi coming to bring their gifts to the newborn king. And so you'll notice the Magi is still up here, so it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Uh, so, so I'm so glad that you're here this morning. Um, after worship this morning, we will have fellowship hour in the in the fellowship hall. So please stick around and, and join us for some coffee and some treats. And I'll invite Cindy up for our call to worship. And no, I'm really not Kathy Bowen. <laughs> She's having some problems with her back today, and so I'm stubbing for her. So please join me in the call to worship. Today, we welcome the Magi into our Christmas story. A story of wonder and light, of angels, shepherds, and virgins. In the midst of darkness, they chose to follow the light. Their story gives us hope that God still sends light for us to follow. We come today knowing we too are on a journey. May we be faithful followers of the light of God, so that we too can be bearers of hope and justice for a dark and lonely world. And please join me in the opening prayer. God of love. love. From generation to generation, across nations, cultures, and beliefs, we see evidence of you. Let your light continue to shine in our hearts and help us to make a reality your desire for a world filled with justice and peace. That, just as the three wise men of the East recognized your call, and invitation made by your star. Also, we must be willing to listen for your voice, follow you, and give you the best of our lives. May that light ever shine, and may it lead us always to you. And may we shine in the radiance of your glory. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And the reading today is from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. May God bless the reading of this word.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. It says, The Visit of the Wise Men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child that has been born of the Jews? For we observed his star rising at it, for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Why don't you go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me words that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard this from the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went to the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. <coughs> On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then after opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another bird road. This is the word of God for the people of God. There are about a thousand different ways that we mark time throughout the year. From celebrating the new year ushered in to our daily habit of drinking our morning cup of joe, we need these ways to mark time. We even have calendars. I take particular joy in buying my new planner each year, choosing it and marking it up in the new year, setting my goals. Um, just, it's good for us to have these uh, ways to remember our appointments, our special remembrances as well, because it keeps us alert to our lives. It keeps us grounded. And you'll notice that different religions of the world keep their own special calendars to deepen their faith and connect with their community. So this time of year, you might have noticed that there are celebrations like Kwanzaa and Hanukkah, which are celebrated in December, um, and Orthodox Christians, actually, who use the Julian calendar, they celebrate Christmas today. So we're celebrating Epiphany, but they're <laughs> open in their presence and having a good time. So we mark time um, at church. We mark time, time as Christians in a different way. So Christians in the West, are no different, and although there's different ways to mark time and um, connect with our faith um, and offer our worship to God, um, many Christians, including us Methodists, have ways that we enter into time. And by di having a different calendar, having Epiphany, having Advent, having Easter, um, year after year, is for a purpose. Not only just to be special, you know. We place our focus in our lives around this belief and this truth that because Christ has come, absolutely everything has changed. And so today, we celebrate that. We celebrate that everything has changed in Christ's coming. But we also have more to celebrate. We also celebrate our incoming and outgoing leaders this day. Uh, because every year, uh, we have a charge conference where we elect our leaders for the coming year, and then the coming year does come, one way or another. So today we do those two things. We celebrate Epiphany, this season of manifestation, and we celebrate our leaders. So Epiphany. Epiphany is the season of manifestation, a realization that the light of Christ is here. God is with us. How can we be awake to this reality. Where is God casting light? 
What do we see in the stream of God's light? What do we realize about ourselves and the world because of this light? Although it is true every day that God is with us, this season allows us to press into this mystery and be formed by this God who has come and will continue to transform the world. So in addition to Epiphany, we also pause to mark time by celebrating our leaders. Celebrate the time after, this, after the sermon today where we will recognize our leaders. And now each of you, whether or not you're on the governing board or not, you are servants in this church. You are leaders in your own right. And, but these leaders have been specifically given charge to see that the decisions that this church makes as a community is in alignment with the gospel, first and foremost, but with the vision and the values of this community. It's an important role in the shared life that we have together. And in a sense, our leaders are given a special task to reveal the light that dwells here among us and lead the church in moving towards it, aiming for that light. Leaders, and each one of you, answer this call to manifest God in this place, here and now. So it's fitting that we would align their installation and bless them and pray over them on a day such as this. Now the wise men. The story of the wise men is a familiar one to our ears. Three men, they come from the West. They're studious men who have interpreted the heavens. They're leaders, they're seekers, and dreamers. And they understand that something cosmic has occurred with the birth of, of a child in a small town called Bethlehem. And all of their training, their curiosity in their lives bid them to follow this rising star. And they turn to their, the political leader of the region, who is a man called Herod, with their hopeful expectation and their curiosity. But Herod is not... Herod is a fearful man. He's not the best leader. A man who has manifested his power through violence. This new light found in Christ is going to rise in this violent context and will even die by violence such as Herod's. People like Herod go against the way of God. And unfortunately for the Herod's, of this world, God's way can never be thwarted, not by death, not by any power or ruler, not by any action knowingly or unknowingly done that <coughs> seeks to undermine God's light. So when the Magi approach Herod with their burning curiosity, Herod feigns a little interest and says, ah, oh, yes, I too would like to pay homage to this king, knowing full well that he himself wants to be a king himself in his own right. But this is not what the wise men do. Instead, upon witnessing Jesus with their joy, they make a courageous choice in dissent. They do not follow Herod's orders to return. And this is done because of a dream, God's intervention, that they decide not to return to Herod. No speakable content could be found on the screen. <laughs> Herod thought he could undo what God had set into motion with the birth of this child. But instead, God thwarts that plan, turns it on its head, and um, the thing that would have interfered with God's plan, God's activity in the world, does not happen. So from the Magi, we learn something profound. When we seek the light, we will not only be rewarded by the joy of seeing God revealed in unexpected places, for Jesus was not born in some great, inaccessible place, but in a small, shiny, small um, town in Bethlehem. <coughs> so we will be rewarded by the joy of seeing God in unexpected places, but we will also be given a particular kind of freedom. We are given a choice. Will we submit ourselves to the whims of the powers and the principalities that rule this earth, or will we be courageous enough to live differently? Will we be courageous enough to receive the consequences of that choice? 
Will we walk a different path? If we offer our worship to the Christ child, who and what are we going to turn away from? What will we stand for? Who will we stand beside? If we know deep in our being, in our faith, that we cannot undo what God is committed to doing, what will become possible when we join in on what God is committed to doing? What happens when we join in with God? Christ's coming has changed everything. For the Magi, it went so far as making a claim on their political loyalties, even if it meant making an enemy of someone like Herod, who was powerful, he was violent and manipulative. The Magi chose descent, chose to worship this child even of a different religion, putting the words of Isaiah into context. The nations will come to this light. The light of Christ is a way of uplifting the dignity of all, extending that light beyond all borders. And it bids us in turn to manifest that light for others. So as we enter into this new year with Leaders, old and new, may we joyfully say, Arise, shine, for our light has come, the light of Christ. Arise and shine, our light has come. So may we look for this light and turn to it and be changed by it. May it be so. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so now's the time where I'm going to put our leaders on the spot. <laughs> so I want to give a special thank you to um, Kathy Yelly, who is our outgoing president and our current um, treasurer. Uh, she was our governing board chair during a time of transition. We um, installed something called simple governance, which is a way of small churches being able to be freed up to um, to make decisions and to, um, to make choices and to vision and dream together. And so whenever you transition into something new, there are bumps on the road, there's things to learn, and you know, for, for us all, for the community, especially for the pastor. So she led us with compassion and hopefulness and love during that time. So I just want everyone to give a round of applause for Kathy. <laughs> And um, Beth Evans, who's sitting in the back there in the white, <laughs> is our incoming governing board <coughs> chair. Um, and she is going to bring um, some of the same of what Kathy brought. A lot of compassion, a lot of intelligence, and a lot of care. Um, so we welcome her, and uh, we're so thrilled that you're taking on this important role for the church. So let's give Beth a So the board is remaining mostly the same, except for these little switches. And the last person that we need to recognize is, of course, Terry Woodward, who has been on the finance committee for a long time. Um, and he was a member of the governing board this past year and is stepping down. Um, but Terry has been very important for the church because not only do you have the knowledge of finances that we need, but you have a history and a love for this church. And so that's come to fruition at different times where we've been needing to chart a path forward and we need to know where we've been. So thank you, Terry, for your faithful service, not only this year, but for the, all the years in the past. So thank you. So I ask now you, the congregation, you're the ones that... Um, really elected these leaders to take place, um, take these roles on, let's pray for them and bless them in this coming year. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Our God of light and peace, you have called these servants here at Florence UMC to boldly follow you. So grant them joy as they serve and as they put their trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
that was mostly painless for everyone except for Kathy and Beth and Terry. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. Okay, well, let's see. Um, and I, I invite you to stand as you are able. There's a song in the air, 249 in your hymnal. Just a few quick announcements for you. <clears throat> Coffee hour, of course, is right after church today, so stick around. And in the fellowship hall, as you enter in, there are clipboards for you to sign up for ways to serve. So maybe new year, new you, new ways to serve. So we've got um, different ways to sign up. So if you're interested in being a, a reading scripture in worship, for example, or being an usher and you've never tried it before, or maybe you'd like to bring communion to people that are homebound, all that is on there, so please sign your name if you're interested, and someone from the office will be in contact with you. Also over at the Fellowship Hall will be um, the candles that we used during Advent that you made. Um, uh, you can bring them home now, finally. I've, I'll, I'll let them go back to where they belong. <laughs> so um, some of you made extras, so you might want to offer it to someone else or bring it as a gift. Just, just an idea. Uh, but enjoy those in your own, um, in your homes. And uh, Spiritual Renewal Weekend is coming up. It's February 10th and 11th, um, so the week before Lent starts. Um, Jennifer Yoakum is our special speaker at that event, um, and she's going to lead us in a workshop on storytelling, and she happens to be here, so I'm going to put you on the spot as well. <laughs> It's going to be great fun. It's going to be great fun. And um, one of the things that we do every spiritual renewal is have a choir. Um, so Sylvia over at the Presbyterian Church gathers people um, to sing. So the rehearsals are starting this week. So Wednesday um, at 3.45 um, at the Presbyterian Church. So if you need want more information or a reminder or something, um, let me know and I'll send you a note. So Spiritual Renewal Choir, Wednesday at 3.45. And then coming up, PFLAG, uh, Monday, January 8th in the Fellowship Hall. And um, Wednesday, January 10th, we'll have prayer shawl ministry. And then um, pot, looking ahead to potluck, um, a group of people have come up with an idea of having a game night uh, for, um, for those that are interested. So we'll have a potluck and a game night with with those at New Life Lutheran Church on Wednesday, January 17th. So come ready to mingle or eat some food, play a little. If you have a game that you'd like to bring yourself, go ahead and do that. Um, but there will be games provided. So should be fun for those of you that like playing games. Poker at the Methodist Church. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> And then our regular happenings, uh, United Methodist men are going to meet still on Thursday at 8.30 a.m. at Fresh Harvest. So if you're interested in um, joining that group, talk to Bert. And Adult Sunday School happens every Sunday, or most Sundays, um, on Sundays at 9 a.m. So they watch a video together and they have discussions. So it's a really great group. Um, and this, this time of year, they're studying the New Testament book of Hebrews. So if you, if you want to get nerdy with Bert... That's the group for you. Um, PALS continues to meet on Fridays at 1 to 3. And other reminders, of course, is keep filling that food share barrel. It goes um, to good, um, to hungry people. And of course, there's hungry people we feed every week at free lunch. So sign up to help out um, or come and enjoy a cup of soup. So are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Sweet silence. That's, that's good. That's a first, you guys. <laughs> Receive the benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. 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 And we've got a fun sending song, Jesus, the Light of the World. So stand as you are able to sing.
Go, Pisa, shine! <laughs>